everybody, my name is Yurge Gaming, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm currently typing the name of my previous title. Alright, so. Alright, so never mind. Here we go! Back to game. Wait. Landscape. Uh, kawaii. Ho. Can you guys? Why is that like blacked out? Hopeless. Okay, you guys can say. Hopeless ex existence, vivacious universe, happiness, games, pout, puppy, wonderful, judgment, anime. Misfortune, disoriented, determination, headphones, email, la oh, tenacious, intellectual. Okay. Another day passes. Woohoo! Another time. Woohoo! Yay! And it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Zach. Yo, Siori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Um, it's just so not used to be you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. I'm, I'm a simpleton. Spe oh, no, she's a simpleton. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thank you. I'm good. That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Yori? Eh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. Uh, so he nervously retrieves your coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill on the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves they use one option. Uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. But you are. If you feel guilty, then that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Zach to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that. Besides. You should only buy what you can respons responsibly afford. That's true. This game is free, so I can, I can get it. You guys can get it if you want. Frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah. Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, dearie. Doesn't it happen? It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. Okay. You were right, though. I did something bad, and I have to accept the revolution. Retribution! Revolution is what we did against the British in, like, 1776. That, still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Uh, don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. <laughs> But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. 
Come on, give me more credit than that. Did I just... Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks you in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Uh, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So you already glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Natsuki, <laughs> that's, okay. that's so nice of you. <laughs> that's nice. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it already. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Mmm. <laughs> Sorry, you suddenly claps your hand out of her mouth. I bit my tongue. Ouch. Painful. He, you're going through a lot over just one cookie. And Suki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars cannot be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. So he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arm around her. Ah, oh, jeez, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Mm. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you just seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Haven't you any heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. That's true... Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. Didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Hmm? Now I could close the chub over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But, what? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzily glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Zach. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki won't end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Zack, Zack! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were going to make some posters and stuff. So we need to go find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Are you going with Zach to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, but I want to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Zach? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? 
dude, I just spilled I just spilled coal all over myself. That sucks. Uh, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. He, me and Monica have it all planned out. Sure. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance. Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. Zach, you're not thinking about, the, about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. Sure. It's about performing. Like you say the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Caress the final joyous moment between my fingers. What? But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the one prosperous field behind me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. So you're... How do I put this? Of course, just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Uh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? Ah, uh, I know, I know. It's just, I meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Aha, uh -huh, don't say that. It's embarrassing. You're embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yes. Ah, uh, I guess so. Ah! So, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I am so excited! Yay! The festival is gonna be so much fun. Sure it is. Uh, I believe you. I'm literally my mouse wires are all twirled up like that. So you already spent yourself around in the hallway again. Hey Zach, is this classroom over here empty? Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing the happy vibe from the world around her. Pretty nostalgic feeling to me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight for the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls out a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Story starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Kia. Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ouch. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Ouch. Jeez. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hand from her forehead. I gently brush her bang to the side. Ow! Sorry! There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Zach, where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Siri really likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left her. She has one palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were in the wrong spot before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand her the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. So he opens the cap and starts drinking from it. So Yori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? So he places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Yay. I have pencil. See, pencil. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. 
Hey, Zach. What? This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? I don't remember any... What, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things that you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. Oh, what? You would really, okay. It was almost like you blamed yourself when we were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it wasn't really your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was so, so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If it wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Zach, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me. Even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. That's nice. Yay. That's nice. Don't call me that! And I don't really don't do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. <sighs> Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Okay. Really? Maybe you're right. Zach. I'm so glad that nothing has changed between us. Okay. Do you think it'll be like this forever? No. Forever? If I'm honest to myself. Whoa. whoa. Tense moment here. Give me a second, guys. Whoa, tense moment. I had to go to a bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom. So, tense moment break. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So, it wouldn't be fair to me for me to make any promises. Sorry, I just got a phone call, guys. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I am so happy. Suri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside, but when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Follow Sayori at the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump without much success. We, in a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, uh, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. <laughs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Huh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. We have it all right here. Found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work. Zach. Uh, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for story. I made it I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start with working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. You ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. Oh. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. My back hurts, man. All right, boom. First one up. Zach, I really love your poems. I cannot believe you've been hiding these from me. I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one that feels that way, so. Huh? No way. Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki's the least likely to admit how much she likes something. 
but I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about. Well, oh, fun. Whoa, 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 wild west. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's, it's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? Huh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> Never understand when I try and explain things do to you. Do you see? What? I pat her head. Aha, uh -huh, hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. She already starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Zach. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've ever written something for me. <laughs> so you're, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Sigh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? S -s Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. So he hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped, but being inattentive of surroundings, she bumps right into me. Sorry, it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. Bend down and pick up the broken pencil. So he clutches the desk beside her to support her knees, shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Ha <laughs> ha Let's sit down. Yes. I grab Sayori's arm. Sayori's arm? I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot all about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's so warm and tingling, but there's no type of waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put a bottle I put, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes my, my collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go like exploring a cave, discovering the secrets in the nook and crannies. Digging, digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off my bottle caps. Doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my front locked door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. They come such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? They frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let it go, it shatters against the the tide between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floors. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. What? Uh, holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like... That was deep. That was like deep stuff, dude. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Ooh. Maybe because I'm so used to be being cheerful. Well, never mind. Thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out so good that you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. Whoa. I gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get don't get ahead of yourself. So you always had a habit of getting obsessed with something. 
before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion arise makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Well, that was a, that was a fun ride, I guess. Okay, let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It, it, it's nothing. I'm just tapping to inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to, feel, to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. It's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I, I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendency as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon... Wait, wait where did it go? would always come back for more. The enticing beauty of, of my cutting knife was the symptom. My bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon and herbs. The moon incitements its phase and reflects much more light coming off my cutting knife. What is with the knife? And very same light glistens in the eyes of the raccoon. In my fr raccoon friend, I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes more hungry and more, fr becomes hungry and more and more frequently. So it's, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood. <laughs> Classic Parolian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. What? Knife? What's the deal with the... Choppy choppy? Chop 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 chop. What's the deal with the knives? Like, what's up, man? A little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that, yes. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I can take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's some I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way Ugh, I cannot speak. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more of my unusual hobbies. It's the sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B b because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Zach? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Uh, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I'll go with Monica. Hi again, Zach. How's the writing going? Uh, all right. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori. Like the uh, other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Uh, that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I I'm not shy, it's just... 
<laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Atsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? I uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. That's a weird name for a title, okay? Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless... Cut. Cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. S sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Oh, whoa. Hold up. Hold on, guys. Give me a sec. Guys, I gotta end the episode here. Hmm. Yeah, I have to save it right here. I have to actually go. So, I'll see you all next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. And 